I mentioned earlier that the new Liberal MP for Wentworth, Dave Sharma, is giving his first speech to Parliament later today. I caught up with him just before coming on air. Dave Sharma, thanks for joining us. You must be looking forward to your first speech or maiden speech later, the, later today. Uh, that's right, Chris. Yeah, I'm giving my first speech to Parliament at the House of Reps at 6pm uh, this evening. Um, and it'll, it's, you know, it's a big occasion, I think, for any parliamentarian. I've got lots of family and friends and colleagues coming along. And I think once you get that done, you can get stuck into the normal business of Parliament. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, you'll be thanking people and talking about the electorate and all of that, but when it comes to political philosophy and policy, what are you really going to focus on? Well, look, I think the, the two things I'm going to focus on, and no surprise here being a Liberal, is, is, is the secu security of the country and, and the, the economy. And, you know, as a, I'm a strong believer that the, the first and foremost duties of any federal government are to keep the country safe and keep the citizens safe and, and keep the country prosperous and the economy growing. So, you know, I'll be focusing very much on economic management uh, and national security. Without stealing your own thunder, are there any new ideas, new directions you're going to promote in this speech? <laughs> Uh, look, there's a couple of things in there, but I'd encourage you and your listeners to tune in at 6pm. <laughs> OK, well, indeed, uh, it's a big occasion and uh, congratulations on that. Now, uh, I've talked to you before during the election campaign about how you branded yourself as a modern Liberal during the campaign. Others did the same, Tim Wilson, notably in Melbourne. Is this a, uh, a branding that you're going to continue with or was that just an election campaign phrase? Well, look, it was just an adjective, and I don't want to overplay this. I, you know, I was running as a Liberal candidate, and clearly I'm a member of the Liberal Party. Um, but I wanted to stress um, that I'm modern in my outlook, and I believe our party is as well, that we're focused on the challenges facing the country today and into the future and the challenges facing families, working families um, and people. I mean, and you see this in the legislation that the government is passing through Parliament this week, be it the Future Drought Relief Fund bill, be it the tax cuts last week, be it the Temporary Exclusion Orders bill. We're dealing with, you know, the contemporary challenges and the problems that are coming down the pipeline at Australia now, and hence our outlook is modern. I don't think it's, a, you know, it's, it's nothing more to it than that. All right, let's look at some of the policy issues. You mentioned national security. Of course, tied up in that is border security. Your predecessor in yep. Wentworth was uh, Karen Phelps, the independent, who held it for a short while. She defeated you in the by-election uh, last year and then you've won the seat back uh, this year for the Liberal Party. But she... I suppose the only thing she got done while she was in Parliament was get this Medivac bill up uh, with uh, support from the Greens and the Labor Party. There were warnings that it might lead to uh, an encouragement uh, for people smugglers, uh, attract more boats. We've seen at least three boats uh, intercepted since then. Uh, do you think it's important to actually repeal that bill or is uh, its impact on our border protection exaggerated? I do think it's important, um, uh, and for two reasons. Firstly, you know, the problem that that bill was designed to address was already being addressed. We've already brought over 900 people to Australia for medical treatment, and obviously, you know, in compassionate cases, in, place, in cases where people need higher level medical treatment than is what is available in Manus and Nauru, of course we bring them to Australia. We're a compassionate and decent country. But So th this legislation addressed something that was already being addressed, but it also um, created a significant problem in that the people who are now brought to Australia under these new Medivac provisions, there's no provision to return them back to Manus and Nauru for resettlement in third countries. So it is creating a backdoor to enter into Australia and I think um, you know, the people smuggling trade uh, looks at it accordingly. Yeah, Christina Keneally and others in Labor keep saying where is the evidence that the Medivac laws have called any problems? Well, I would have thought the boats that have been intercepted are the evidence. You can't have a direct causal link between each boat and the Medivac, uh, Medivac bill. But this is exactly what the government and others warned about if there was any perception of a weakening of our border protection laws. Yeah, true, and, and not just the government, of course, you know, the Department of Home Affairs, the um, security agencies as well. And, you know, so much of this is about signalling to the outside world and the signal that we sent with the passage of that legislation to the outside world is that Australia is softening its policies on border protection and the people smugglers take that, they package it up to their clients and they sell the message that Australia is open for business again. And that is absolutely something we want to avoid. We want to avoid the needless deaths at sea. We want to avoid you know, 17 new detention centres in Australia that we've been able to close, you know, being opened up again. Um, and we want to have people come to Australia uh, for humanitarian reasons through the regular channels. 
Well, one person who's had a long interest in Australia's strong border protection and the integrity of our immigration system is the bloke who's about to become the new Prime Minister of Great Britain. That is, of course, Boris Johnson. I mentioned at the top of the show that I met him perhaps 15 years ago when he was a backbench MP and editor of The Spectator. I met him on a visit with Foreign Minister Alexander Downer when I was working with him. I think you were in that same meeting as well, Dave Sharma. Uh, uh, Boris Johnson was pretty focused on Australia, had a pretty good understanding of Australian issues and was particularly interested in the way we'd secured our borders. Yeah, I do remember that. I think it was in 2005 and I was in that meeting as well. Um, and I remember a long conversation uh, that he had about, you know, quizzing us about our border protection policies. And this was in 2005, of course, we just had a, um, a big influx of people in, in earlier years um, arriving Australia, in Australia unlawfully by sea and we managed to get control of it. Uh, and though he was seeing similar problems in Europe and the UK and wanted to know what we'd done. So I think he's, he's had an interest in Australia and Australian policy for a long time back now. Do you think that border protection interest, those immigration issues, have been pivotal in his strong support for Brexit, uh, a Brexit that uh, we expect now he's going to be able to deliver? Well, he has to deliver, really. That's his, that's his only agenda coming into the Prime Ministership. Look, I think that's right, and I think, um, you know, obviously immigration was, was a big part of the driver of the Brexit vote. When you look at, you know, exit polls and qualitative research about what people were voting on, I think it was a sense that, that they had that they, the UK didn't have control of its borders or its migration policy because it was signed up to EU-wide arrangements. All right, uh, just on back to domestic issues, and you, of course, represent in Wentworth uh, one of the wealthiest, if not the wealthiest, electorate in the country. Uh, but do you agree with some of your colleagues, uh, Barnaby Joyce included, uh, former uh, Prime Minister John Howard, no less, when it comes to New Start, that the government's got to find the way to fund an increase in that New Start allowance? Look, I'd say, you know, government is always about difficult decisions amongst competing priorities and a dollar spent somewhere is a dollar less spent elsewhere. You know, the government doesn't have access to infinite resources. We don't want to tackle or tax our population too highly. So, you know, I'm always hope open to seeing the case made, but I would say with New Start, firstly, you know, the best form of welfare is a job. Uh, secondly, two-thirds of people uh, uh, who are on New Start are often have found employment within 12 months and 99% of New Start recipients are getting topped up with some other form of allowance. So it's not designed to be a long-term welfare measure. It's designed to help people make the transition um, back into the workforce and that's what we need to be focused on, making sure it's happening by keeping the economy strong, keeping employment growth strong and making sure the job market is healthy. Do you uh, see that it's a high priority, though, maybe the top priority when there is some flexibility in the budget, uh, when there is more money to be spent? Do you think that increasing New Start is one of the top priorities for the government or not? I wouldn't see it like that right now, no. I mean, I think it's something we should always keep under review, but no, not, not right now.